Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're gonna do gluten and dairy-free cake. Now, why are we gonna do cake today? That is such a great question. The reason is because gluten-free cake in the store costs way too much money. And it doesn't even taste very good. I mean, if we're being real here, it tastes like cardboard most of the time. I mean, there are some exceptions, but most of the time. And then when you buy the cake mix, you're paying like six, seven dollars for a cake mix. No thanks. This recipe is so amazing. You will never, ever buy it from the store again. Comes together in two minutes and cooks up in 30 to 35 minutes. It is an amazing cake. Now, we're gonna go one step further because this cake I'm making is a wedding cake. Oh my goodness, I'm so tickled. My cousin Megan and her fiance Nate have asked me to do their wedding cake for June. So I need some practice because it has been a hot minute since I made a wedding cake. Well, actually, I've never made a wedding cake before, but I have made cakes. I actually used to do cakes for my children whenever they were little. I do have my Wilton certificate um, of completion that doesn't make me a professional at all, but I kind of know what I'm doing. But look at this picture. It looks, it's so elegant and look, it's simple and I'm pretty sure I can pull it off. So today's video is the cake, the raspberry filling and the beautifully white frosting. So. You ready for this adventure? Let's get to the cake. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is get our oven preheated to 350 degrees and we are gonna line our baking tins with uh, parchment paper. And the reason we wanna line it with parchment paper is because I don't want anything to stick to the bottom. Because as you saw in that picture, it is a nice flat top. And so I need to invert the cake on itself so that I get a nice flat surface to be able to work with. So I'm gonna use the parchment inside. Um, this cake mix will do one nine by 13 or two eight inch pans. These are probably five or six inch pans. Um, so I'm gonna have some cake mix left over. So I got a couple other tins ready um, just in case we have extra cake mix. I mean, I know we are going to have extra. So that's so that we can cook the extra and not have it go bad. Let's get started. Super easy, this comes together in two minutes. So first we're going to put in the oil into our mixer. One cup of oil. Now you can use any oil of your choice. I've used coconut oil um, and I've used, this is just canola oil. Um, it's really any oil of your choice. If you are not dairy free, you can even use butter. Butter, butter, make a butter cake. Just saying, you probably shouldn't, but you can. Although oil, butter, I mean, it's just trading one fat for the other. Okay, now we're gonna put in one and one half cups of sugar. And we are gonna go ahead and get that started. And we're gonna turn it to medium. And then we are gonna pour in our egg whites. I don't wanna talk over that. If you are doing a white, white, white cake, it's only egg whites. If you don't care if it's white or yellow, um, do the whole eggs, it's fine. I actually weighed these um, because I need 200 grams of egg whites, um, which is about four large eggs or five to six medium eggs. Um, so it's more ideal to weigh it out because then you know exactly how much is going in your recipe. Um, this recipe will be in the info. It'll say print recipe here. You can find it there and it will have the cup measurement as well as the weighted measurement. So on medium, we're gonna get the egg yolks in for only one minute. Okay, here we go. And now we're gonna get in all of the rest of the ingredients, starting with three cups or 420 grams of Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking mix. Now, don't use Bob's Red Mill all-purpose flour. It has to be the one-to-one -one baking mix. We're gonna just dump it right in. We are gonna dump our salt right on top. This is half of a teaspoon of salt. Three teaspoons of baking powder. 
not baking soda. Don't make that mistake. It is indeed baking powder. Three teaspoons of vanilla. Now I am using, you can see here, I am using clear vanilla. And that is because it's a wedding cake and we want it to be as white as possible. Um, and I'm using oat milk as my alternative milk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it on slow first and let it start to incorporate. Otherwise you'll get a puff of flour everywhere and that's, you don't want that. You wanna keep your flour in the bowl. All right, and then I'm gonna add my cup of alternative milk. All right, and then I'm gonna get it on medium for just one more minute. All right, the one minute is up. That's it, our cake is made. Now we just need to get it into the pans. I am super happy with this color. Um, now I just have to maybe not burn it. All right, so what we're going to do here is I am going to weigh out my cake. And that's because I want identical layers of this cake. So I've, I've teared it out. Um, and now I'm just going to pour it into my prepared pan. And I think I'm shooting for like 650 grams to 700 grams. I actually can't remember how big it needs to be, but we'll just eyeball it. It's about 600 grams. Pink, 600 grams. Okay, our next step is just to tap the cakes on the counter carefully to release all of the bubbles. Ready? Okay, they are ready for the oven. Now we are gonna bake at 350 for anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. Um, and your altitude and all of that other stuff. So we're gonna check them at 25 minutes, but I will be back when they are cooled and we are ready to fill them. Be back. All right, time to make your filling with the deluxe cooking blender. Okay, if you don't have a deluxe cooking blender, but you wanna make this recipe, there are stovetop directions and I will have them in the info of this video as well as the deluxe cooking blender instructions. First, we're gonna put in our berries. Next, we're gonna put in a fourth of a cup of water. We're also going to put in four tablespoons of lemon juice and four tablespoons of cornstarch. I also have two and a half cups of sugar here, but we're gonna wait to add that until it says add it. So, we're done. All we have to do now, stick on our lid, turn it to the jam setting right there, and push go. Now, it is going to beep. It's going to beep when it's ready for me to add the sugar and it will say add across the screen. I'll be back when it says let's add it. Look inside there, can you see it bubbling? It says add, it's at 210 degrees, so it's time for us to add our sugar. And then we push go again. All right, the timer is up, so let's go ahead and push cancel, and we are gonna get this out, and we are gonna taste the results. Wow, this looks fantastic. Look at it's all gelatinous and beautiful. That looks fantastic. All right, so here I have about seven ounces of berries. And I am just gonna give them a rough chop and then stir them into my finished cake feel, filling. And we'll just give them a good mix. And voila, now we have our cake filling. Mm. 
Oh man, that is a flavor explosion in my mouth. Oh, this one, wow. I can't wait to put this in the cake. We are back and we have cooled cakes. Now, um, you can see that I probably filled my cake tin about 50 grams too much. So I've made a note of that so that I don't have to do much trimming afterwards. So um, remember me saying that you can put parchment in the bottom of your baking pan and it will make them easier to remove. So here we go, I'll show you just how easy it is to remove. Ta-da, and look at that perfect bottom. Perfect. Parchment in the bottom and it makes it really easy to clean later. Because I have to trim now, I'm gonna show you a little hack. I actually don't have a cake leveler because usually my cakes are so level, I don't need one. <laughs> just kidding. I just don't usually care. But for a wedding, we're gonna care just a little bit. So what I'm doing is I am turning over my tin. Here's a hack for you when you don't have a cake leveler. So you take your knife and you rest it on whatever it is that you want to, whatever the size is that you want to level. So we're gonna say it's about there. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have it on that thing all the way around so that it's somewhat level. Bink, and there we go. Now we have a somewhat leveled cake. Oh, let's taste the cake. Mm. Oh, you guys, this vanilla cake is so good. You wouldn't even know it was gluten-free. Look at the crumb of this cake. It is so beautiful, so light, not dense at all. It's seriously a good cake. I would eat it all, but I wanna wait for the um, raspberry. <laughs> All right, let's take our second cake and we're gonna do the same thing. I know I should just get a cake leveler, but that's okay. Before we fill, let's get to the icing. So in your stand mixer, you are going to add one and one half cups of vegetable shortening. That's like Crisco. I know, I know, but that's what frosting is made out of and it's delicious. Then you are going to get it mixing just for a little bit until it's kind of creamy. And then immediately you are gonna start adding your powdered sugar cup at a time. So we're gonna add six cups, one cup at a time. So after the first cup, turn it on low and let it mix or else you will get a puff of smoke that is not smoke, but it is powdered sugar. It's horrible. So then you're going to let it mix until it's thoroughly mixed. You're gonna add in your vanilla and I'm gonna use the same clear vanilla, two teaspoons, add it right in, get it mixing. Add in another cup of powdered sugar and just keep on adding cups of powdered sugar. When you see it start to bind up a little bit, that's your cue when to add your water or your milk. I'm using water because I want it to be stable for outside of the refrigerator. If you use milk, you will need to refrigerate your cake, just saying. Um, so I'm adding my water a little bit at a time and altogether it's like two tablespoons of water and it's give or take depending on what consistency that I want my frosting at. So now here after all six cups, I'm gonna test the consistency Oh yeah, that is perfect. So now our frosting is ready and we're ready to move on to the next step of our cake. We've let our filling cool overnight. Our frosting is ready. Our cakes are ready. Now it's time to make a wedding cake. So I just wanted to show you real quick how white the cake turned out. I'm really happy with the color. Um, I don't think I could get any whiter than that. So we're gonna set that one aside. I'll make that one up for my husband later. Actually, he'll get to eat this because this isn't the actual wedding cake. Her wedding isn't until June. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is get a little frosting on the middle of our cake board. And that is basically to hold my cake in place because they like to slide around them things. 
So let's get it on there and center it right into the center. Perfect. Now we're going to fill it with our filling. Now, here's a little trick for you. If I was to put the filling inside this cake right now and put the other cake on top, it would spill out all over the place and be a huge mess. So we're actually going to hollow out the cake just a little bit so that we can set the filling inside and it will not spill out over the edge. I'm gonna start with an ice cream scoop and I am just going to lightly pull the cake away from the side when I'm poking. So I'm actually making an incision in the cake with the cake with the ice cream scoop and I'm kind of pulling it away from the edge. And you're only gonna go down like maybe half an inch, not very far at all, but leave your sides intact. All right, that looks like a pretty good well there. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're gonna take our ice cream scoop and we are going to scoop in our delicious filling. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. Oh. Very important, you don't overfill it. Um, and it will be tempting because you're like, oh, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. But you wanna push it into all of the nooks and crannies and then you really want it to be even with the top. So you're gonna have to get down and be like, yep, you need to stop. Step away from the cake. Don't put any more filling in it. Save the filling for later. I actually have a, another tier that I'm supposed to do, but I'm only doing this one for you. This is just my first tester to make sure my method works, the cake works, and the frosting works. So if you're seeing this, it worked, maybe. Or maybe, you, maybe you're seeing this because it was a royal fail, whatever. So the other thing I noticed when I was um, messing with these cakes a little bit ago, can you see that my cake has a bubble in it? it has a second rise. So that happened because I overfilled the pan. So note to self, don't overfill the pan. If I want the cake to be this high in the future, I may want to do three tiers of this cake and make them about, you know, yay high instead and just do a third tier. Um, but this is the right height for her cake, um, but not necessarily the bubble. When we frost it, we'll know if it's really a bad deal. All right, so here we go. All right, now, in the old days, I had a Lazy Susan that I could put my cake on and turn in circles and decorate. However, I don't know where that Lazy Susan went, so I do suggest you get a Lazy Susan, um, and I'll probably get one <laughs> for the actual cake decorating time, but let's go. All right, here we go. Our beautiful white frosting. Look how pure white this is. And with no remnants of raspberry, it's gonna stay white. It's beautiful. I'm gonna grab another piece of parchment because I want to check the consistency of my icing. See how it's spreading. Oh yeah. That's spreading really nicely. I, I like that consistency, I like it. I like it a lot. So we are just gonna do our initial crumb coat. Now, based on the picture she showed us, it's basically all just crumb coat. So technically, <laughs> we're already almost done. But um, I do want to run through the technique where we run this around the outside of the cake to kind of get a better texture. Um, obviously, we're just playing it by ear right now because I don't actually know um, what the best way is to ice this cake yet. However, I'm pleasantly surprised the bubble in the cake, as you can see, is disappearing. So I, 
I kind of hoped that would happen because of how thick that I made my frosting, but you never know. You never know. Okay. Now that we have somewhat of a little crumb coat, this is where the Lazy Susan would really come in handy, but you know what? We're just going to go with it. Okay, that's not gonna work. So, let's go this way. All right, check it out. I'm pretty happy with those results. Wow, okay. Okay, I'm feeling it. I am feeling it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the top a couple times. My edge, can you see that? My edge isn't stain frosted. So let's stick some more frosting on my edge real quick. And we will see if I can get that edge to stay frosted. And let me get some. So we're making, we're making those final adjustments. Whoa, hey there. This time I'm going to take care not to wipe it off the edge that it doesn't want to stick on. Okay, here we go again. Flat, going around. Man, I wish I had a Lazy Susan about now. Wow, okay. I super love this cake. This is so cute. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, there's a few things that I need to clean up once the frosting hardens, but um, I'm pretty sure that this cake meets her expectations for her rustic crumb coated cake. All right, well, let's put some berries on it. Um, we're just gonna pile some berries right in the middle so that it indicates that this is indeed a raspberry filled cake. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it over here, but I'm actually Marco Poloing with Megan right now, and we're gonna cut into the cake and see its deliciousness. Are we ready? Here we go. Bum ba -dum. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, there's a couple things that I see here to get better. Number one, I feel like there needs to be that third layer. So I'm actually going to um, do a third layer of raspberry in this cake because two layers is great but with how tall this cake is, it could really use a third layer. Do you see that in there? Look at that in there. Beautiful. So I am gonna make it into a three layers of raspberry um, for both tiers. So, wow. And it tastes phenomenal. Let's just taste it. Are you still watching? Let's taste and see how delicious this cake is. Mm. Oh man, that is so good, that is so good. Well you guys, that was an overwhelming success. Um, I will make the third tier, um, that way the raspberry can be Let's show you right here. Heather, that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Nate got to watch the whole thing with me because he's here with me. And the whole time he was going, mm, I want some. Yeah. <laughs> I have so to try good. that cake. <laughs> it looks so good. It looks perfect. Mm -hmm. And the frosting's beautiful. I'm so excited. Yay. Thanks, Heather. Thanks. This cake is amazing. The only thing that I would do differently is put another layer of filling in it. But other than that, I made a wedding cake and they like it. So excited. I can't wait for you guys to see the final product 
in June. But otherwise, that's it for me. I'm gonna go enjoy this cake. I'm gonna Marco Polo them back with tears in my eyes. I'm so happy that they invited me to be a part of their day. <sighs> this is a good adventure. All right, you guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.